So then as we get ready to leave, I go, hey, so uh, can I call you sometime? <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Relationship Renegade, the show that brings hard truths and the realities about relationships. I'm your host, Jameson Mercier. Yeah, <laughs> that's my name. Uh, licensed clinical social worker and doctor of marriage and family therapy. That person you hear chuckling in the back is my <laughs> co-host, Mia Terrazes. What's up, guys? Joining me for our regular Saturdays. Our weekend edition. How are you, Mia? I am doing really well. Thank you for asking. We survived our first week of school. Yes. Yes. I was going to say, I'll drink to that. Yeah. Um, maybe a little battered and <laughs> bruised, but we're here. Yes. And so for those of you in that situation where you went back this week, whether it was work as an employee or your kids, or you went back with your kids because... They're online and your teacher slash parent slash IT department slash cafeteria staff. God bless you. Yes. And congratulations. You made it this far. Yeah, yeah you deserve <laughs> it. And so whenever you're listening to this, pat yourself on the back, you know, have a drink and get ready for the next week. <laughs> get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> Um, we'll get through it. All right. Uh, today's show, today's episode. So as the Relationship Renegade podcast, obviously we're talking about relationships, but we wanted to just zoom in a little bit and talk about, um, we were initially talking about friendships, but it isn't just friendships, would you say? Mm -hmm. We're just talking about relationships and the different, um, what phases and stages of relationships phases stages yeah how when we change maybe our friend group changes a little bit some people come on board some people fall off so mm -hmm. sometimes you're the one that falls off yeah that's true yeah that and and when relationships uh change if well, not even if it can be difficult you know, I'll be the first to say I've been included in some groups and then I've been excluded mm -hmm. in some friend groups. Right. And sometimes I've been the one doing the excluding and do, being the one doing the in, in, including. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know. It's not a grammar show. <laughs> but um, your relationships, our relationships, they're not... Um, they're not stagnant, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they grow and change. And so what we wanted to do is take some moments and just kind of talk about relationships and our relationships and how they've changed. And maybe it's relevant to you. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we're just yet again, two crazy people wasting time <laughs> on the microphone. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now, Friend, I guess we can talk about friendships. Friendships are interesting because we think, well, I don't know, Mia, do you think we should always have friends? I think we always have friends in some capacity. I'm just thinking about this like quote or this thing that I have. I don't know why it came to mind, but it did. And um, it was something like French Friendships are like the seashells of life. You pick them up along the way. Mm. That's cute. That's, that's cute. What does that really mean, though? I think when you're just traveling through life, you know, in any phase that you're in, whether it's childhood, adolescence, adulthood, workhood, parenthood, mm. you pick up some seashells or some friends along the way and, and in each phase of your life, I feel like. You know what? 
So now I have to take back what I said. I, I agree 100%. And it's funny. It can happen in situations and encounters that you don't imagine. Yeah. You can't, couldn't imagine. A few months ago, we were on a road trip up to uh, Maryland, and we stopped off in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact city, but we stopped in South Carolina, and another gentleman in his truck was getting gas. I think I told you this. No, but I know where this is going because you have a love affair or straight love for your truck. So I can oh, only imagine what happened. Listen, so here I am loving my truck. I drive an F-150 and then this guy pulls up in an F-250. And then I notice he's got some cages and crates in the back. And I got to get out. I go introduce myself. I'm like, yo, bro. And this is a black guy, by the way. You must be doing some serious stuff with this truck here. And so, hey, truck love instantly. So we start geeking out about our trucks. And then he's like, where are you from? I'm from South Florida. He lives in South Carolina. Where are you headed? Maryland. He's like, whoa, that's a drive. I'm like, I don't mind. I got my truck. I'm good. Long story short, he ends up inviting me back to South Carolina for the whitetail deer hunting season. Yes. And my wife is watching this from my truck. And she's like, this guy's crazy. He's not even wearing a mask while he's talking to this guy. This was early on in COVID, but I'm like, I had an instant connection with this guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, it felt, I don't know what it was, but whether it was the truck or the outdoors or the fact that it was a black guy like me into the outdoors, I don't know what. Right. So we've stayed in touch and he was like, hey, this is what you need to do to prepare for the hunt. A couple of weeks ago, I reached out to him and he tells me that he'd been in a terrible car accident. He rolled his truck and completely totaled his truck. Oh, no. Bruised ribs, punctured lung, collarbone fractured. Yeah, totally messed up, but he's okay. My God. And I have to tell you, Mia, in that moment, I felt like, like this is a best friend of mine. And I felt like, whoa, I just met this guy a couple of months ago. What the hell is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. But that connection around just those few things was just so right. strong that I felt like this is my brother. This is someone I'd known for years. Not something that is crazy. You guys had like, I think just in those little things that first connected you guys were actually like big things. Like, you know, they were common ground, but also that you enjoy. You just had like a little Tinder profile, but in real life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you did. You had. You know, like he likes trucks. Ooh, I like trucks. Oh, he's a guy. Um, we can relate on that on that way you, you know just, that he's a black, black men. Right, right yeah you you got a lot of information in first glance man <laughs> i told him i was going to see my brother he had a new baby um he was like you know what let me give you something for your brother he gave me some homemade oh. strawberry moonshine oh my gosh amazing that sounds like a wonderful like first encounter so then as we get ready to leave i go hey so uh can i call you sometime (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm telling you me and here's the thing about me so i don't make friends right and so when we're talking about this episode i i was like yeah at at my age i'm not really into the friend making business so this totally caught me off guard You know, that's really an interesting point too, is I do feel like people, you know, there's even a song, I don't even know the song, but like youths reference it all the time (laughs) and they say it's no new friends. Like that's the thing in the song is no new friends. And um, after a certain age, you're like, gosh, it's just so exhausting to like try to find another friend or really 
put yourself out there to um, have another friend, I guess. So it's so funny that you said that because um, I find myself getting into that sometimes too, where friends will uh, invite me over and they have their friends and I'm like, oh, okay. Or they want to hang out, you know, the friend of the friends want to hang out with you. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, but it's like no go, new friends. Right, I don't go looking for it, and yeah, and and you know what? When someone decides they, you know, they fall off or they move on, mm-hmm. sometimes I see, I'm secretly glad for that. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're like, okay, this one's gone. This is great. I don't have to. Yeah, you know everything that goes along with that. Yeah, no, you're right. And I think that that speaks to kind of where you're at in life, which is why I think in the different stages of your life, you have friends that come and go. You're, you know, you're, you don't align as much like you clearly for this, that story with that gentleman, you had a lot of things in common and that really kind of instantly connected you guys. And I feel like, in different stages, like if you were in a different stage of your life, perhaps that wouldn't have happened or you would have just kept driving if you were in your minivan with your first child with like (laughs) her You know what I'm saying? Um, You would have just kept going, but you instantly had, you know, this connection. And I do feel like throughout life, you have this instant connection with people. You know, I see it a lot too with when my friends um become parents Mm -hmm. and that's a whole different dynamic for like a non-parent and a parent (laughs) or a friend who doesn't have children and friends that have children they tend to hang out more with parent friends they can relate more they have children that can play together um so I find myself sometimes seeking out like my single friends versus my parent friends because there's more common ground with the single friends. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Until the the parent friends, kids start bullying or being a bad influence on your kid, then you got (laughs) then you got to cut them loose. But I get it. I get it. You know. But what about those like unicorn? friendships i'm going to call them unicorn friendships that have lasted you know throughout these different stages of your life like from childhood until now what do those friendships do you think do do they look like do they have they come and gone have they it is it a once in a while type thing that you talk to these people or what do you think well so my experience has been that it changes, right? Mm-hmm. So as, as, as we're speaking now, there are mm-hmm. two people, yes, two people that I've known at this point, I can say over 20, maybe 25 years. Mm-hmm. And there are seasons where we are really, really tight. Mm-hmm. And then there are seasons where we are like uh, polar opposites. Mm-hmm. And we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Um, as I, maybe three people, as I get older, I say to them, I understand more why that dynamic is, mm-hmm. you know, because in my younger years, you don't know what people are going through and why they're not answering your calls, right. Right. you know, uh, why it seems like you're always the one going after them. You know, we all go through that. Mm -hmm. And because I myself am experiencing those same challenges, I get why they may be not as responsive. Hi, we are the Messiah Kids. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking subscribe now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. And at the same time, I see myself doing the same thing too. So I can't judge them for what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's rare. Um, 
And I think if for people who do have that, um, it's it's good because few people will know you um, yeah. that long, you know? Right. Uh, and, right. And, I, and, and I'll say one more thing is that one of the traps I can say that people get into is we try to hold on to some of those relationships mm. just because of time. Yes. Yeah. That it's almost like a, an entitlement that they have been there for so long that they should, they're entitled to be a part of your life moving forward. Right. Like they should, they've been there for 20 years. They should remain there right. for another 20. Not mm-hmm. realizing, like we said at the onset, things will change. Yeah. I think that's a tough pill to swallow too, is when you think about how much changing actually happens throughout your lifetime and to have a a friend that has been with you in maybe two seasons of your life, or maybe like my teenage, for instance, my teenage friends, like you're experiencing a lot of new emotions in your teenage years. Mm -hmm. And, um, a lot of things just developmentally that's happening like in individuality and stuff like that. And you start to kind of, I know in those types of relationships, they, you kind of got like resentful of the other person or maybe that's too strong of a word or just because you didn't understand what was happening that they were experiencing things for the first time too Mm -hmm. and having different interests and you're, your first time kind of see you know having someone so close to you like not interested in the things that you were once interested in at the same time Mm -hmm. and I feel like that carries over even into your like adulthood like what do you do some people get really upset about it some people get really offended by it um it's just, and I've had that happen too. Like what this person's change is person so different. Well, yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, and, and you know, we, we, we chuckle mm-hmm. because in the moment we can't see that because we yeah. want the friend that we want. Right. You know, um, I have, I have my cousins when I was living in Haiti, we lived together for, I think all of our childhood. But then when I came to the States, that was cut, cut off abruptly, mm. you know? So I came to Florida and I think, I don't know how soon after, but they went to Boston with their family. And so that was seven. And then maybe we spent maybe 20 years really not talking. Um, and then in recent years, you know, there's like text messages here and there. Hey, how you doing? And then people start getting married, having children. And now there's this reconnecting mm-hmm. with me and my cousins. Um, and I don't know if it's because we've like accomplished the things we've set out to do and we're kind of settling into ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I feel closer and bonded to them in this season, mm-hmm. uh, similar to when we were kids, I guess, you know, and you have playmates, but you don't really think about it when you're kids. Right. Um, and, and it's awkward when you're not ready to do it. But now I look back and I'm like, that's just, I guess, the way things go. Mm-hmm. It's true. I also had um, a friend that I recently reconnected with. And it's so interesting because those people that like, you know, knew you in some of the most vulnerable times of your life, they're always kind of resonating a little bit in your mind every once in a while, you know, they pop back up and at least they did for me. And, um, you know, we had a pretty not great falling out. Um, and then we had a few years where we like didn't talk at all. And then every once in a while there'd be like some very like, reaching out a little bit like hey was just thinking about you for this this came up how are you very like kind of superficial kind of 
reintroductions, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, recently we had this wonderful FaceTime phone call and kind of sifted and sorted through some things. And um, now are kind of re like completely reconnected, but it was so interesting to actually be able to sit someone down who you, uh, you know, aligned with for so long, then straight up fell out like in a not great way and then reconnect um, with more understanding and more empathy um, and open-mindedness to what the reason was for the falling out mm -hmm. um, and being able to get past that and having forgiveness and things like that. Um, and just seeing that, you know, there's room for that person. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I also have learned reconnecting after a fallout, it doesn't mm -hmm. guarantee that their reconnect is permanent. Right. Right. And, and I've seen that in my own life. I've seen it. It. I, I think we literally said it's, there's an ebb and flow and there's a coming mm -hmm and going kind of like with the tides right you know some stay but some go what's your feeling about this thought that friendships if you want them to kind of be around or be um you know you're in it for the long run they that they require work Yes. <laughs> My feeling is yes. <laughs> and this goes back to what we're saying. I think this is why when some friendships end, mm -hmm. I'm okay because it was just too much work. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand work, but I don't want to, I don't want too much work, if, if that makes any sense. Um, so there are some relationships, some friendships where Hey, Bob, listen, I'm going to go do this this weekend. You want to come? Oh, I'd love to, but I can't. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Thursday, late notice. All right. So, hey, Bob, in, in two months, I got this thing happening. Want to tag along? Oh, I don't know. Or maybe they say yes, and then they bail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, like, hey, listen, next summer, we're taking a trip. Okay, this is 12 months away. So when it begins to feel lopsided, uh -huh. yeah. then I'm just like, all right, listen. Then clearly it's not the kind of friendship or relationship that I thought, right? So I kind of, you need to be like the uh, over the fence type of neighbor or friend. You know, I catch you when I catch you, when I'm taking my trash out and that's it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a struggle because yeah. for a lot of people, at least when I begin to feel that dynamic, I mm -hmm. take a step back and check myself because it is possible to want more than the other person is willing to give. And that kind of work, I don't like that. I don't want that. Mm. So call, I'll call, I'll check in on you. I'll be like, yo, let's go grab a bite to eat. But that kind of work when it's mutual work mm -hmm. is not a problem for me. Interesting. Cause yeah, I mean, I feel like um, definitely I've experienced that too, where I'm like, you know, some people are like friendship shouldn't be work. And I think, I don't know if I agree with that because it's still a relationship and it's two different people. Mm -hmm. um, experiencing life maybe more in common, but, you know, experiencing life differently. And, you know, I, I do hear what you're saying too. And I agree with it, that when you're putting in too much work or simultaneously calling it effort, um, the balance is off. The dynamic is off. So if you're constantly reaching out to someone and they're not, you know, responding like you're just kind of like well, this is kind of wasting my time I'd really like for this person to be there but they're a little too flighty and let me tell you I've been on both ends we all have 
I've been on both <laughs> ends. I've been that, that flighty person. <laughs> and you know, it's so interesting too, because that this is all coming up because I just had a weekend away with one of my girlfriends and, um, we, uh, were very, very, very close. Like she was my plus one to like weddings and things like that during that season of our lives where we were both single and whatever. Then she has a, a boyfriend now. So that changed the dynamic a little bit. And now she's in the, the situation where she really wants the girl time. Um, cause she's been dating her guy for a while. Um, so we got to have some time alone, the two of us and doing things like we used to before. And it felt really nice, but we got to have those con that conversation, like, you know, kind of those on honest, uncomfortable conversations where it was like, this is what was going on in my life. This is why I was really flighty. And her being able to tell me, like, this is how I felt when you did this. Like, I just thought that was just you. And I'm like, well, that's not me, but maybe that was me at that time. Exactly. Um, and so just having somebody that was willing to kind of talk to me about it. And, and also for me to be willing to listen to what was going on. I feel like that's a dynamic that is really special and not just for friendships, but for like other types of relationships too. somebody that's willing to um, hear you listen. And the other one that's you know, open-minded enough to actually tell you how they're feeling, be vulnerable, vulnerable enough to tell you how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I definitely got, got put in my place a little bit uh, in a nice way, uh, yeah. of how it made this person feel. So it's, you know, those things do happen for sure. And I think that's where you really make those bonds. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if all we do is laugh and joke all the time and then, okay, that's fine. That's one friend. Mm -hmm. But when things get difficult, I don't know that that's the one you're going to reach out to. Right. You know, because right. I don't sure. know that there's any substance there or a foundation. Or it's just, it's, it's, it, it's work and it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. You know, also just to kind of move it along a little bit or in a different direction. I was just thinking about this now that I feel like when, as the older I got, the more diverse my friend group got. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you go to college, I feel like you're kind of opening your mind to other experiences and things like that. Yeah. Um, but like when I was, you know, younger, my friends happened to be a lot of gender related. Like they were all girls, high school, you know, maybe it was a little bit of, of boys, but mainly, girls mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well you know that makes sense because when you're younger you're kind of limited geographically mm -hmm. you're limited mm -hmm. um what's the other like you have limited resources and limited access mm -hmm. so your friends are in your neighborhood like for me a lot of my friends were in my church mm -hmm. because that's all we did i went to school i went to church and then i went home Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you grew up Haitian, the three L's are Lekol, Leglis, Lakai. And so if you understand that, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, but as you get older, and perhaps you can drive, right? So when you're able to drive out of your community, or <laughs> you, get a, you get a bit more uh, self-assured, right? So then maybe you explore different um, events, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm the kind of person I enjoy. I'm a big Rascal Flats fan. What? You didn't know that? No. Okay. So our first dance was to Rascal Flats at my wedding. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm telling you, so, so some some of my friends say I, I'm I'm really a white guy in a black guy's body. Um, the ones that know me. Um, but see, I could not express those things or explore those things as a 15 year old Haitian kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's only as I begin to grow and expand and broaden my horizon mm -hmm. 
that now my my social circles and my groups begin to diversify. Right. You know, and, and a lot of parents are not seeking to create that diverse friend group for their kids, mm-hmm. which is something else entirely. But um, parents really should consider that. Um, yeah. And, and Agreed. yeah, much more diverse social circle instead of like this one homogenous group. Because mm-hmm. um, it does, it does, it, it it's night and day. Yeah. And so it was just, that was just making me think of like how diverse in, in cultures, but also in mixing of like genders and things like that as I've gotten older and, um, you know, having friendships with both women and men mm-hmm. where before I was like, no, you, you know, you, I just kind of hung out with girlfriends, which my friend group still right now is predominantly girls or women, excuse me, my Queens. Um, mm-hmm. but I do have more, um, male friends and I find them to be just amazing. You know, they can talk to you in a different way that the girls don't (laughs) I feel like um there's something about um you know being able to have both um you know your male and your female friends or even your LGBTQ friends and things like that as well yeah yeah I just have more of an appreciation I guess for different types of people in my life Mm mm-hmm you know, as, as a young person, I don't, not that you don't care about that stuff, but at least for me, when I was growing up, I wasn't interested in all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I was, I was very self-centered and just didn't care about nobody else. But as I've gotten older, you see the value of other people and different types of people. Right. You know, I got another buddy. I got another buddy. He's like, Hey, come up to North Florida anytime you're ready and we'll go turkey hunting. I'm like, yeah, boy, got that hunter's license, hunter safety license. You just let me know. So I can appreciate him now. Right. You know? Even different age friends as well. Like, you know, when you're younger, they don't really want you to hang out with people that are older because they'll have like an older influence and, you know, they want you to stay kids for as long as possible and not exposed to other things. And now it's like so enriching to have um, friends that are of different age groups as well, um, because they have a lot to, to, to offer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. No, that, I mean, when I was younger, I wish I had some older friends older guys and it's funny I did but they were not really I feel doing a whole lot for me Mm -hmm. so Hmm. yeah but that's that that's that's then neither here nor there well um huh yeah you had me really reminiscing about these friends and friendships and relationships there yeah, it was worth the conversation. I feel like, you know, friends are, are our big support system throughout our life and help us navigate really tough stuff and really happy stuff. And um, they deserved an episode of themselves. And okay. so now, Jameson, you get, you get the, the little quote, the seashell quote. I do get it. Uh, I was a, <laughs> I was uh, presumptuous in my denying of it, but now I take it wholeheartedly. Yeah. So, and if you guys listen, if you get the seashell quote too, let us know. All right. If, you, <laughs> <laughs> if not, that's okay. Um, if you found value in this show, listen, we would appreciate a review on iTunes, and uh, if also you'd share it, send it to a friend. Send it to a friend. Share it with a friend. Hey, someone you consider a friend. You know, it yeah. all works together. It's like we planned this stuff. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, let them know and then let us know if you have any stories of your own about friendships, how they've grown and changed over the years. Let us know. Hit us up in the uh, comment section uh, and social media as well. And uh, please, after you've done all that, just make sure you come back. Uh, next week Wednesday Saturdays every day 
just to check us out here on Relationship Renegade for another installment. Uh, you're going to take us out, Mia? What you got? Final thoughts? Oh, man. Um, no, no seashell quotes? Uh, well, hopefully we'll, we'll be gathering some more seashells with our viewers here, or listeners. <laughs> was that corny? That was awesome. A little bit. That was awesome. Yay! Be one of our seashells. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening.